You know that thing in the Bible about render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's and unto God that which is God's? Well, in the words of the late Oakland Raiders quarterback Kenny Stabler, easy to call, hard to run. And I was put in mind of that because September 29th is the anniversary of the excommunication of Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II back in 1227. Well, one of the excommunications. Actually, there were four of them, which seems like a lot. And you look at it a little deeper, you can see the problem here. I mean, his title was Holy Roman Emperor, right? But there's the Pope, whose title also has something to do with holiness, and they're having a bit of a holy rhetorical war. And what's worse, they're not having it over religious matters. It's not because Frederick was leading a dissolute life, or the Pope was. It's because they were squabbling over politics and military affairs in Europe. And this is no reason to go around excommunicating people. Now, the formal pretext for the excommunication was that Frederick wasn't willing to go on the Sixth Crusade. And this, even Crusades are a bit of a mixed bag render unto Caesar-wise. I mean, they're political and they're military, but they're meant to be in defense of a social order that includes reverence for religion, teaching of religion, maintenance of churches. I mean, Alfred the Great defended churches against pagan invaders who would have pillaged them and burned them down, and nobody suggests that he wasn't being holy. But when you get to the Pope, and the emperor. It's a very different matter. You see, Frederick actually had left on the Sixth Crusade, and then he got too ill to continue, which you don't excommunicate a guy for getting sick, do you? On the other hand, the only reason he went on the crusade is that he had managed to marry the heiress to the kingdom of Jerusalem and promptly had her father deposed so he could bag it himself. This doesn't look like a terribly pious thing to have done. And then he recovered and he left on the crusade again. The Pope excommunicated again, him again. He said, you can't go on a crusade when you're excommunicated. I don't know what the point of double excommunicating a person is. How many times can you not you know, receive the wine and the wafer? And then eventually the excommunication got lifted and then he got excommunicated again, again because they were fighting over things to do with city-states in Italy. At one point, Frederick also had the Pope excommunicate his own son and then he got himself excommunicated yet again and died. But by the time all this has happened, people are getting a very clear sense that the Pope isn't doing this because the man's life is dissolute and he didn't lift the ban because suddenly Frederick repented. He's doing it because he has gotten far too involved in secular affairs himself as the papacy had at that point. It was a major political and military player. And that is not the thing that is God's. This is clearly the thing that is Caesar's. And the more the papacy involved itself in that kind of thing, the less moral authority it held, especially when it hurled excommunications around, including, uh, you know, Innocent III, after John sidled up to him in England during the Battle of Magna Carta, Innocent excommunicated the barons who were upholding Magna Carta, which, again, what, what was wrong with their personal conduct? He never even close to saying that. The more you do this, the more you make the papacy a target for people like the Medicis and the Borgias, and the less you make it a genuinely holy institution before you know it, you've got the Reformation on your hands and Luther and Calvin marching about, talking about the whore of Babylon and things of that sort, and your moral authority is in ruins. Now, it's easy to say all this. You can see how the papacy would get dragged little by little into reflections on the moral quality of politics dragging them into reflections on the political quality of politics until you've lost sight of the original thing. But you look at all these excommunications of Frederick II, all of them for reasons of state, not for reasons of soul, and you say to yourself, even if it's difficult, it really is better to separate church and state. And the church is free to comment on the appropriate conduct of political matters, but when it starts meddling in them, it doesn't make politics holier, it makes the church less holy. And that's always a mistake, no matter how many times you excommunicate one lousy Holy Roman Emperor. If you've enjoyed this segment, please visit my website, that's www.johnrobson.ca, for more on my work and how to support it, and please keep watching The Rebel.